in our world today we wake up to different kinds of impacts let's take the impact in the world for instance there are different kinds of blogs that we wake up to today and i'm not going to call any blog name because listening to this years after i'm sure many more blogs would have come out uh, that may have taken over the popular blogs that are currently reigning at the time of this recording or not but listen pay attention to what i'm saying we have a world that is very blog centric where people go to blogs for information okay so you have situations happening in the country in our country for instance or in the world but i want to bring it to be more specific to country so you have a situation that is happening in your country and then your blog in your country carries that situation and a lot of times paints it with the narrative that they have in mind to be able to invoke certain reactions from you so this is why it is no surprise to wake up or go online hopefully you the first thing you do is not wake up and go to the blog but whenever it is that you've settled in and you go online for whatever business that you're going online for you can stumble or intentionally come across a post depending on your purpose online and you would always see the popular blog post with a lot of comments so what what am i driving out uh, driving at rather with this illustration of the blog and i said stay with me still stay with me so we go our world as we know it now in this 21st century at the time of this recording is shaped and formed by a lot of the narrative that people see on blogs now once upon a time i remember when these blogs came out and people of faith were like oh don't follow don't do this don't ah god forbid hey gossip blog god, that's what it was literally called do you remember for those who were there when these blogs started to seep into the country because it is not a new thing it's a thing that has always existed the only thing is that it started slipping into nigeria into the nigeria space and the examples of the phone of the first set of blogs and how they took a lot of bashing and even to today i know one of the first sets of the blogs that started in nigeria a lot of people don't talk to the or some people i'm not saying a lot of people don't talk to the founder because they felt or they still feel <laughs> depending on where they are at i'm not in their homes i don't know <laughs> but then a uh, word on the street was that they this blogger or set of bloggers but this blogger because one person i'm talking about particularly painted and tainted a scenario that happened in their life falsely or got out an information that they didn't want to be out there in the blogs and you know they were annoyed about it or are still annoyed i want to believe you see past tense thing but i know that that particular blogger doesn't really mingle with a lot of people because this person uh, doesn't really have a lot of friends because of what this person did pioneering this well just call it for what it is gossip culture in the country but now you will see that people would not be comfortable calling it gossip culture anymore um, this is because you know things have changed uh, people now find a different way to to create and call such things you know they have a way for it there's a way that um there's not it's not a situation of you know ah it's what we saw online when even a lot of times these blogs post things that are not already online they source for it but things like is what we saw online and so on and so forth whatever makes people sleep at night they have been able to give themselves that narrative 
to be able to say, I'm going to go ahead and get make this the source of my information and I'm not going to feel anyhow about it. What I'm trying to say is what was problematic about five years ago or so is no longer problematic. And I'm not addressing blogs. If you think this is all about blogs, you are missing it. That's why I'm saying stay with me. <laughs> you are mistaken. If you think this is about blogs or this is about uh, bloggers. Where I'm going to, the most important thing, uh, place I'm going to and I'm headed, I needed to start with something that's particularly, re that you relate with literally, practically in today's world. That's why I started with that. Is Can you see the impact that blogs have in our world today? Can you see the impact? I want you to think about it. Can you see it? I want, just think about it for a moment. Think about it. I just want you to pause and just think about how blogs have literally shaped our life. You don't, I don't think you understand the depth of what I'm saying. I, I don't know if you understand the depth of what I'm saying. Like blogs have literally shaped the way we interact with people, the way we interact with things, and even further the way people, what perspective people have on things. This thing I'm saying is powerful. I don't want you to gloss over it, whatever it is you're doing or, or not doing as you're listening to this message. So our world as we know it is now being impacted by certain appetites. So what the blogs have done is that they have been able to set up certain appetites and also narratives. Narratives that now set the way we relate with people we make decisions, we think about things, we strategize, and can go on and on and on. Narratives, for instance, one, one that continues to, people continue to fight about, unfortunately, even Christians, is the narrative of sex. And I'm not going into that. I'm just saying this is the power of blogging. When blogs continue to put out lewd, picture provocative pictures and certain kind of pictures consistently with certain in quotes celebrities or whatever the case may be and they promote it promote it promote it promote it promote it and these people that are on the pictures are are applauded or these people that are on the pictures there are people seen uh, as people doing great things because their names are known and everything in between they are subtly but very deeply pushing across a narrative that is birthing impacts in the lives of everyone that comes across that post and do you have people who fights this narrative? Do you have people who are who continually say, no, we are not going to do this. This is unacceptable under the comment. Absolutely, you do have such people. Uh, but the problem is, and the question usually is, are the impacts of the people under the comment section fighting for what they perceive to be true is it having enough impact compared to the blog itself in some ways yes it does have impact sometimes when people read things they see a different perspective sometimes uh, it's like you know the uh, the word that is on rocky grounds so a person wants to be impacted by that word in the comment section but then the person goes away and just falls on rocky grounds and it doesn't produce any fruits. So it's like, oh, nice. It's true. Wow, what this person said is true. And that's what happens day in, day out. I don't just want to get into that. Like, oh, oh what this person said is true. Mm. Then you go and you forget about what this person has said, but you remember what the blog says because you're going to come back to the blog in the next two hours, three hours 
or at the very worst, the next day. Impact is what we see with the blogs in our today's world. And the impact is really deeply felt when it's when it is evident in the culture. And when I'm talking about culture, I'm not talking about Igbo, Yoruba, Tif, Efik, Edo. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the culture of life, the life culture. And simply put, what is life culture? Life culture is basically the way we do things, our habitual system, what we do when we wake up, how we think, how we have been wired and trained to think, what makes us take certain decisions, what makes us buy certain things over certain things, what makes us want certain things, appetites. So you also see appetites in life cultures. In, in when you're building life culture, so what makes us want certain things? What so what are we relating with? And appetite, I don't talk about just. I'm not just talking about food. I'm talking about the things a person wants to watch. If a, if a blog says, "Oh, this movie, blah blah blah," and people are raving about it, you see that it builds up appetite for people who have not watched the movie. So they're like, "Oh, let me go and watch the movie," because for a lot of people, they have the fear of missing out. And watching that movie is them saying, I want to be included in the happenings of my land. So if you don't know what impact shouldn't look like, um, you're not going to know what it should look like. So impact, this impact talk uh, and this impact teaching that we have been going through even though we have continued to share that it really has to do with a measurement of how God sees and how God you know, rules and stamps what it is that you're doing. You have to understand the impacts that is not godly, the impacts of the world, the impacts of the world system. I think that's how I want to say it. Impacts of the world system. Who They're they not doing anything to move anybody to any kingdom of god they're just doing things to either make money or whatever there is always an end goal that always has to do with the things of the flesh so at the end at the bottom of all these blogs you see that the end goal and why they don't care that they are why they don't care that they are uh, daily, uh, let me say their daily meals is impacting on the lives of the people uh, that is they are coming to their blogs to read and all that is because at the end of the day, the essence of their own impact is for the thing of the flesh. So it's either money, it's either fame, it's either they are, they are, they are, name the things of the flesh. So when the impact, so impacts, when the impact is geared towards the things of the flesh, there are certain, there are certain ways it's going to go in the sense that you don't care the negative impact it has on the life of the person. All you care is your end goal. And for a lot of people, let's using this blog example, it's usually money and fame. I just want to be popular. I don't care if I post a transgender person, blah, blah, whatever is going to make me popular and whatever is going to get people talking. That is what I am going to do. That is an impact geared towards the flesh. So now you have heard how to not do it, at least in the very basic way, because we can have this conversation, extended conversation on and on and on. How then should you do it? How then should you do it? Okay, so let us go into the book of Galatians 5 from 16. Okay. It says, let me emphasize this. As you yield to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you abandon the cravings of your self-life. As you yield to the power, to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. 
when your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit, you hinder him from living free within you and the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your self-life from dominating you. So then, the two incompatible and conflicting forces within you are your self-life of the flesh and the new creation of the spirit. I just wanted to take a moment there. I hope you're really paying attention. So the two incompatible and conflicting forces within you are your self-life of the flesh and the new creation of the spirit. But when you yield to the life of the spirit, you will no longer be under the law, but soaring above it. When you yield to the life of the spirit, you will no longer be under the law, but you'll be soaring above it. The behavior of the self-life is obvious. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, chasing after things instead of God, manipulating others, hatred of those who get in your way, senseless argument, resentment with when others are favored, temper tantrums, angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself, being in love with your own opinions. <laughs> Being envious of the blessings of others, murder, uncontrolled addiction, wild parties, and all other similar behavior. Haven't I already warned you that those who use their freedom for these things will not inherit the kingdom realm of God? So what should we do as people who want to inherit the kingdom of God? What should we do as people who understand that the impacts and the things that we do daily is not even the impact, the things that we do daily have impacts. The things that we do daily have impact. The question is to what end does is the impact of the things that we do daily? The things that we do daily have impacts. The question is, to what end do the, the, is the impact of the things that we do daily? Hmm. But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expression. So how should we operate? What are the fruits that are produced to us by the Holy Spirit. And in previous teachings, we've broken down Galatians 5.22. So please get to our seller store and, and make sure that you get our resources. So none of that. We have resources there that can help you to understand what it means to live in joy, peace, patience. So go there, get, get to our page, one diva underscore global community or one diva global community or send a WhatsApp message to 234 zero eight zero eight seven 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 that's three sevens six seven five five but the fruit produced by the holy spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expression joy that overflows peace that subdues patience that endures kindness in action a life full of virtue faith that prevails gentleness of heart and strength of spirit never sets the law above these qualities for they are meant to be limitless i think that last paragraph if we want to just get into it we will not even leave here <laughs> Ah, did you hear what did you hear what the Bible tells us? By the way, that's from the Passion Translation. Never said the law above these qualities, they are meant to be limitless. So today I want to invite you to come into the first and most important level of impact, which is surrendering yourself to the spirit of God and allow him use you so that his fruit will be evident in you. Um, I used to think this way, and I know a lot of people think this way, a lot of some in the past, but I know sometimes now still for some people, 
um, you will think, oh, the fruit of the spirit is a thing that you now say, okay, so this is what I'll now do now. Uh-huh. I'll now do joy that overflows. Oh, yeah, joy that overflows, joy that overflows. You'll now be dancing on the external. And there's time for that, trust me. You can go through a period in life where you need to shake things up externally for it to correlate with your inside. But you see this invitation to living a life of impact through the first and most important level, the fruit of the spirit, is not one that is not an external dancing thing. You can now express yours externally, nothing wrong with that, but it's about yielding and submitting to the things of the spirit. And how can you yield and submit to the things of the spirit by choosing God? over his over everything else by choosing the way of god when it doesn't seem convenient by choosing the response of god when it doesn't seem like it is appropriate because it's looking like this person as this person gave it to me i'm supposed to give it back to this person but you are choosing the response of god you're not allowing your flesh take over you are choosing the response of God in how you make decisions. You are in your business. You want to make a decision. There is one fraudulent way that is inviting you in. And you know that you, it's, it has been hard in the last three months to pay your staff or to pay your household people or to even get money for yourself personally. So you are being invited. It may not even be a business. It may be you are being invited to get into something wrong rough and selfish and then you are contemplating should I let me just do after I will pay my tithe if I can just do this you want to use the things of the flesh to say oh you are fulfilling the things of the spirit it can never work so the first level of impact is submitting our flesh over to God you know why like I started at the very beginning You are never going to be able to do things in alignment with the kingdom if you do not examine the motives of what you are doing. So impacts, a lot of times I know people start with, so what are we going to start? Where is it? Where is it at? Okay, where? which foundation are we starting? You know, that's what people think when they think of impact. First. Oh, yeah, yeah, which song I go play? Which song am I going to sing? Make I blow? Those are the ways people think of impact at the very beginning. But impact is not... Impact is not just about what you jump into. It's not You are not trying to show other people that you are impactful. You are not going to be accountable before them. When you die, it's not people you are going to stand in front of. Okay, oh, so this is me. I've, I've, I've transitioned from this earth. So come and take accounts. So you better get your priorities right and know who you are living for. <laughs> know who you are. Wake up every morning remembering that the earth is not the end. But what God has called me to do on earth, I must do and I must do quickly. Mm. So when you do that and when that happens and when you think that way, you are going to now start looking critically more into the spirit and the intent of your impact more than just what it is that you do. Because have you not seen that part of the Bible that says some people's work will be tested and you, uh, our work will be, re, will be burned through, will be tested through fire? I hope you know that some people's work will be tested and um, it will burn. Yeah, it's going to burn. They will enter heaven, but all the motives that they used to do the work was selfish. So before we close out, let's just get into that scripture that talks about the work. Because at the end of the day, the very core of this episode is to teach us about the importance and the intent behind impacts. And that's how I started with that story. It's not just about doing something. It's about why you are doing something. It's not just about why you are doing something. It is to what end you are doing that thing. And the end to which you are doing that thing would help to purify your motive. Because you've got to understand and you are got, you are operating from a place of understanding where it shows and where it says that is not just about the doing, it's about the why and about the end of the doing. Is it going to get people to the kingdom of God? Whether it is seen by people that you 
like and you would have loved them to see what you're doing or whether it is unseen by man and it is seen and recognized by God. First Corinthians 3, the 12 to 13. It says the quality is still from the Passion Translation. The quality of materials used by anyone building on this foundation will soon be made apparent. Whether it has been built with gold, silver, and costly stones or wood, or, or wood rather, hay and straw, their work will soon become evident. For the day will make it clear because it will be revealed by blazing fire and the fire will test and prove the workmanship of each builder. If his work stands the test of fire, he will be rewarded. If his work is consumed by the fire, he will suffer great loss. Yet he himself will barely escape destruction like one being rescued out of a burning house. I encourage you to sit down with that scripture and meditate on it. I'm not going to speak on it. Uh, just, I believe that that's where God wants me to stop. And I want, he wants to continue with you on that scripture. That is second Corinthians from verse 12. So just read it from verse 12. And the last part is a Selah moment. He said that if his work is consumed by fire, it will suffer. And this is verse 15. It will suffer great loss. It will suffer great loss. Yet he himself will, be, will barely escape destruction like one being rescued out of a burning house. Second Corinthians 12 to 15. So the question is, do you want to finish living life here on earth? And then you go and be tested by God to give account and you'll be running as in you your after your work has been tested you, you look like you barely escaped a fire burn that's what the bible tells us i'm not the one i'm not the one i'm not exaggerating it you heard it sit with the scripture yourself think about it you now look like you barely escaped because all the works that you were doing was out of selfish include you i hope you know you can be in church and be selfishly serving mm, so that they will see you so the great you know everything is about what you can gain is what is in it for you that's all you have ever known that what is in it for you it's going to come back to boomerang and i hope it's not going to be too late i hope people will not <laughs> find out too late when they <laughs> When it's too late and you cannot do anything, this, your work will now be tested by fire. I pray that the Lord will give us wisdom, strength. The Lord will give us the ability to comprehend what he needs specifically for your life. Yeah, this message. By the Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, you are going to be able to draw out the things that you need for your life in this moment through this message and you are going to be able to live it out for the rest of your life. You are equipped, you are strengthened and God continually be con God continually glorify his life through your life in the name of Jesus. I'm Sage now in Kechi Emmanuel Laude the visionary and founder of Wondiva Global Community, and it has been a pleasure presenting this message to you. If you want to reach out to Wondiva, be a part of our community and be a part of the other things that we do apart from this great message or messages like this, please reach out on WhatsApp 234. If you're, if you're reaching out from outside Nigeria, 08 777 Zero eight seven 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 six seven five five. I'm sure that you have found this episode insightful. My question is, what are you going to do with it? My encouragement will be to share this with at least two people, and most importantly, actually sit with one of the scriptures and meditate on it. God bless you. Visit our website www.wondiva.com. That is W O N D I V A. Dot com. Till the next episode, continue to flourish in Christ and make sure that you catch up on previous episodes that you may have missed. Thank you for listening.